Russia's state-controlled energy company Gazprom has announced it is cutting gas deliveries to both Poland and Bulgaria. Neither of the EU nations have complied with a demand from Russia's President Vladimir Putin to start paying for deliveries in rubles. Several other EU nations, including Germany, are also yet to comply and are heavily reliant on Russian gas. Now here's what uh, Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki had to say about the cutoff. As I have emphasized many times, Poland has prepared to diversify its gas supplies and to obtain gas from various sources. And even before the Baltic gas pipeline enters service, we will be able to protect our economy, protect our households and Poles against such a dramatic step by Russia. I'm now joined by Jan Palukat. He's a journalist and correspondent for German state broadcaster ARD uh, in Warsaw. Jan, we heard the Polish prime minister there saying that Poland will cope without Russian gas. Will it? Well, officially they can, and they have good reasons to say so. Um, given the fact that the deposits here in Poland are, according to official data, pretty much filled as to two-thirds of its cap capacity, uh, given the fact that the heating season is almost over, and given the fact that Poland indeed built alternative routes, they built a, a terminal for liquid natural gas uh, at the Baltic Sea, they are about to uh, finalize the already mentioned here in the statement um, Baltic pipeline towards the Baltic Sea, um, which could deliver Norwegian Norwegian gas uh, to Poland as for starting for October. So putting all these things together, Poland can cope. But of course, LNG gas from overseas and Norwegian gas uh, is much more expensive uh, than um, is much more expensive. Excuse me, is much more expensive than Siberian gas. So the real challenge may be even higher inflation numbers, and Poland mm. is already uh, suffering high inflation numbers here. Now, many other European countries have refused to follow Putin's demands to pay for Russian gas in rubles. What does this step now mean for them? Do they need to worry? I think really indeed that this is the point here. This seems to me rather a warning signal to other countries than uh, to Poland. There are countries that are much less prepared for this situation. That is Hungary, that is Austria, and that is last not least uh, Germany, which having its deposits rather rather lowly uh, filled with having much less alternative routes. The Jamal pipeline, which goes through Poland and ends in Germany, is not the main route of Russian gas supply. We still have Nord Stream. We still have routes via Ukraine. Um, if they would cut it all, then we could see shortfalls in gas supply um, all over Europe and a real test for European solidarity since the gas system in the European Union is very much interconnected. Mm. So the uh, Ger uh, German Germany's Minister for Eco Economy and Energy, Robert Habeck, promised uh, that Germany will help out Poland, uh, but then German gas reserves at the moment are at a very low point. How realistic is that? Well, maybe there comes a point when the uh, Polish uh, side could help Germany. Uh, there could be interesting questions on the table. For instance, the question whether Polish households would be ready to accept lower temperatures in their flat in order uh, to keep German chemical industry running. But very interestingly so, yesterday German minister here promised to use uh, German national oil reserves uh, in case that the refinery in Schwedt at the border river between Poland and Germany at the Oda would fail. This refinery is using uh, Russian oil at the moment, seems to be the main obstacle towards a full-scale oil embargo. And, and this is important here, this refinery delivers not only the greater Berlin region, but also parts of Poland with oil products. Hmm. Uh, last question, uh, briefly, if you can. Uh, how has this latest move by Vladimir Putin to cut off gas supplies to Poland influenced the mood in Poland in the general public? Well, this was, of course, a huge topic uh, yesterday. Today, we are talking already about what I mentioned, about inflation rates. So I think this step comes as a surprise for this very moment, but not so surprisingly. And... And Putin hit a client that was already on the run, was already about to go. Because they are prepared for other supplies, Poland already uh, said that they would not prolong the existing gas contracts, which would exceed anyway until the end of the year. So it's a surprise, but not a huge surprise, I would say so. So very much a political move there as well by Vladimir Putin. Thank you very much. Jan Polakar, journalist correspondent for German broadcaster ARD.
Well, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and Russian President Vladimir Putin met one on one Tuesday for the first time since Russia invaded Ukraine. The UN chief criticized Russia's invasion as a violation of its neighbor's territorial integrity. Putin told the Secretary General that he still had hopes for negotiations with Kyiv. Despite the fact that the military operation is ongoing, we still hope that we will be able to reach agreement on the diplomatic track. We are negotiating. We don't reject talks. Putin and Guterres also discussed proposals for humanitarian assistance and the evacuation of civilians from conflict zones, including the southeastern city of Mariupol. Guterres stressed the need to keep talking to the Russians to try to end the conflict. I know that uh, uh, we have uh, today, in facing uh, a complex situation in Ukraine, different interpretations about what's happening in Ukraine. But that does not limit the possibility to have a very serious dialogue or now best we can work to minimize the suffering, create the conditions for uh, effective dialogue, create the conditions for uh, a ceasefire as soon as possible, create the conditions for a peaceful solution. A little earlier, I spoke with our correspondent uh, Rebecca Ritters in Kyiv. I asked her if the meeting between UN Secretary General Guterres and President Putin has raised hopes of peace and an end to the war in Ukraine. Well, there hasn't been too much reaction to that meeting so far. And I think, you know, you couldn't even call it cautious optimism at this stage. But, you know, there was some good news, if you can call it that, to come out of that meeting, some positive signs. Uh, Guterres saying that the UN would be willing to go in and assist in a humanitarian evacuation of those soldiers and civilians. Uh, and Putin, at least in, in, in practice, agreeing to such a thing. But, you know, everyone's waiting to see what Putin will do and following his actions rather than his words. As we know, they often don't meet up. So from the Ukraine Ukrainian side, obviously that is what they wanted. They wanted an agreement on humanitarian corridor coming out of that meeting. So the fact that there's been positive signs is, of course, being received well here. But that conversation will have to continue uh, with the Ukrainians when Antonio Guterres comes to Kyiv on Thursday. Mm. Uh, Mariupol, of course, uh, on the agenda there in, in that meeting. Uh, what are you hearing from there? Well, Vladimir Putin has come out and said that fighting isn't ongoing in Mariupol, but as of yesterday, it certainly was. Uh, it's hard to get real-time information, so I can't tell you what's happening there right there at this moment, Gerhard, but uh, the fighting has been going on uh, as of yesterday, as the latest updates that we have. Uh, and definitely, there's obviously a lot more involved. We need more than the fighting to stop to, in order for those evacuations to get underway. And any kind of evacuation in that area would require such a huge amount of trust uh, that clearly uh, isn't being felt on either side, or particularly not on the Ukrainian side at this point. So uh, actually on that, and it's unrelated, but it is worth noting that yesterday in the city here in Kyiv, uh, there was, uh, there's a monument, or there was a monument to the friendship between Russia and Ukraine, and it was dismantled here yesterday. So that's really showing, uh, you know, uh, symbolically at least, uh, how the two sides are faring. So, uh, you know, in, in Mariupol, hoping for some kind of ceasefire fire but uh, as we we believe it is uh, continuing uh, there's continued shelling in the area tw correspondent rebecca ritter's there reporting from kiev thank you rebecca